Hello HCISD, my name is Art Cavazos, your Superintendent of Schools. Today I have with us the top 10 students from Harningen High School South. Their placement on the top 10 represents their hard work throughout these past four years and their dedication to reaching goals they've set for themselves. With their experience in our schools, we take this time to ask them questions that showcase their achievements while providing our future graduates with words of wisdom as they continue their pursuit of academic excellence. To begin, I'd like to go around the room and ask the students to introduce themselves, name all the HCISD campuses they've attended, and share their plans after high school graduation. I'm Tristan Barrera. I went to Ben Mellon Elementary, Coakley Middle School, and of course Harlingen South High School. <laughs> I think I probably would have. And I plan to attend Texas A&M University College Station after high school and more and major in some form of engineering, more than likely chemical engineering. And you're a valedictorian, is that correct, Tristan? I believe so. Thank you, Tristan. <laughs> My name is Ashley Peters. I've attended Long Elementary Memorial Middle School in Harlingen High School South. After I graduate, I plan to attend Texas A&M University and College Station and major in business. Good for you. Uh, I'm Guillermo Tamez. I've been a Treasure Hills Pirate, a Coakley Cougar, and now at Harlington <laughs> South Hawk. Uh, I plan on attending uh, Texas A&M University and majoring in uh, biomedical engineering or some form of engineering. Good for you. My name's Adelina Ramirez, but most people know me as Addie. I went to St. Anthony's Catholic School for elementary, Vela Middle School, and Harlington High School South, of course. And I'm going to Texas A&M College Station to study biomedical engineering. My name is Sabrina Solis. I attended Long Elementary from kinder to second grade, then Treasure Hills Elementary from third to fifth grade, then Coakley Middle School, and now I'm at Harlington High School South. And I will be attending the Macomb School of Business at the University of Texas in Austin. Oh, we have one Longhorn among us. We have quite <laughs> a bit of Aggies. I'm Katherine Allen. I go by Katie. Um, I attended Coakley Middle School and Harlingen High School South. Um, I will be going to the University of Mary Hardin Baylor, where I'll be studying mathematics and minoring in education. My name is Robert Arias. Um, people usually call me Bobby. I started at Bonham Elementary. I went to Vernon Middle School, then Harlingen South. After graduation, I plan on going to Texas A&M University, Kingsville, where I will study mechanical engineering. Good for you. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Guevara. Uh, I've, I've attended Harlingen High School South uh, since my sophomore year in high school. And uh, um, after graduation, I plan on attending the University of Minnesota in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and majoring in aerospace engineering. You're also an Eagle Scout, aren't you, Jeffrey? <laughs> yes, sir. Congratulations on that. Hi, I'm Mitzi Chavez, and I've attended Sam Houston Elementary, Coakley Middle School, and now South. And after graduation, I'm going to attend the University of Texas Pan American and study biology. That's my alma mater. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Angelica Sanchez, and I went to Treasure Hills Elementary. And then I went to Coakley Middle School, and now I'm at Harlingen South. After graduation, I plan on attending... Um, the University of Texas Pan American for the first two years and then transferring to UT Austin and then hopefully get accepted into the PA program back here at UTPA and just become physician's assistant as my lifetime career. Thank you. Hi, I'm Theodoro Mendez, but everyone knows me as Teddy. Uh, I started off in Treasure Hills, went to Coakley, and finally I'm about to finish high school <laughs> in South. And I'm planning on going to A&M College Station, and I'm going to major in biochemistry. Very good. Thank you, Teddy. We realize that being on the top 10 group, uh, you all are very well accomplished in the academics. But can you share with us what other activities you all have been involved in uh, throughout your high school years? Well, I am National Honor Society Vice President. I am also the Senior Editor of the Yearbook. I um, am involved in the Lower Valley Cotillion Club. I'm involved in National Technical Honor Society. I'm involved in the um, leadership, Youth Leadership Harlingen Program here. Um, I do a lot of church um, work too. I do a lot of service work. Um, 
but that's what I do. <laughs> Creates a balance yes. for you. Good, good. Yeah, I think uh, it takes a it takes uh, some extracurriculars to to shape yourself as a as a student, you know, and and some t and you can see everyone here is is has been involved in extracurriculars, and that's that's why they're here uh, because they had that. Uh, but uh, some activities I've been in uh, were Boy Scouts. Uh, I've been active in that. Uh, I've been an active uh, football player. Uh, and and run track, and I've also been in the National Honor Society and and some other organizations like that. They're more service oriented, and and that kind of helps with your college applications, and and it it's paid off. So it's not all about the academics in college applications, right? Not, not necessarily. All right. Who else? Um, I've been involved a lot with uh, my high school marching band. I'm a drum major in that organization, and I love what I do. And I'm also involved in soccer inside of school and outside of school. I've competed in the state level for my select team. And I'm also in many other service organizations, as we all are. And I also play um, flute in my church choir, and I sing as well. So it's a lot so, of fun. So you are a drum major with a hawk band? Yes, I am. Good for you. I definitely agree that being involved helps uh, shape who you are and shape your leadership skills and help you stay focused. I'm the student council president. I've been involved with student council for four years. Uh, I served you on the student advisory board as a community service chairperson. I'm a varsity cheerleader, also involved in service uh, clubs such as National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society, Lower Valley Cotillion Club with Katie, um, and many more. So being involved is important, I would say. So you're going to the McCombs School of Business. That's yes, a sir. pretty tough one to get into. Congratulations Thank to you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I've been um, a varsity cheerleader throughout my high school career, and I also compete um, competitive, like outside of school, and it, I just love it. It's like my passion. So. And then I've also been in track, and I've been in swimming and diving. I joined this year, and I really enjoyed it. And I've been a part of a lot of other clubs also, like student council and THS, Interact Club. And it's just good to stay involved with school clubs because it really does help you like socially and it's a really good So did you say too. you joined swimming and diving this year? This yes. past year? Uh -huh. well, good and for I competed in well I did better in, in diving it because it was like more fun for me yeah. so <laughs> I competed. But you started the swimming program your jun your senior year. Mm -hmm. Wow good good. Anyone else? Um, I've been involved with the uh, National Technical Honor Society, uh, National Honor Society uh, for about two years, I was a manager for JV girls soccer team. Uh, I've been a very proud member of the Harlingen South Mighty Hawk Band for four years, uh, and I've been blessed to be a, a two-year All-Stater, well, All-State musician with them. That's I've, awesome. I've stayed involved. So band is is one of the big things in your in your extracurriculars. Yeah, it's like a it's like a second family, really. Um, it's such a good support system, and I would encourage anybody that's interested in band to join it. There's a shout out for an organization. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So you were manager for JV soccer, you said? Uh, yes, sir. Girls JV? Yes. So you, she was in the soccer At program? At one point, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, anyone else? Teddy? Uh, I also would have to agree with Memo. I've also been part of the band for the past four years, serving as section leader and drum major with Addy this year. Uh, it's a very, very good program to be in. I've also been in all the service programs, NHS and THS and what have you, but uh, something else that hasn't really been explained too much except by Jeffrey who's in Boy Scouts, uh, I also have been in, I have also been in the chess pro program uh, the first few years of my uh, college career in South, but I also, I also used to coach little kids and go to tournaments and I'd go out of state with them and I took them to state. Uh, my sophomore year, and that was a very great experience, just working with all the little kids and teaching them chess. Chess is really taking off here in Harlingen. We actually have summer chess academies yes, happening. Yes, uh, so. I've worked at some of them, actually. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, like Teddy said, I was part of the chess program as well the first couple of years, and it, and it's re it really is nice to do things like that. And just like, um, like Mimo, Teddy, and Addy all just said, I'm also part of the Mighty Hawk Band, and... I would never have done anything else in high school, and I would never be the person I would be right now without them. Because I'm a percussionist, and the f like, 
And yeah, and that's significant because I'm a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> valedictorian's drummer, guys. <laughs> so you want to say that again in case they didn't catch it? The valedictorian <laughs> is a drummer. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and and really, it's all just another. It's, it really is a second family, and even the subfamilies in there, like your own section. And I, I love my whole section, and they're just they're the people who made me the person I am today. And like, I, I wouldn't have done anything else different if that's if that's the only thing I could have done that's the only thing I would have done but I have done other things <laughs> so don't worry guys and like I've been in all those service organizations but also I was this year I was on our high school masterminds team which that's is right. this trivia game show done throughout the whole nation I believe and our valley has our own little section and I had we advanced the furthest uh, Harlan's house ever done in the competition this year and I really wish I would have done it in other years. I only, I only did it my senior year, but it was really, really fun. So these questions are easy compared to Mastermind, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 a little. Anyone else? Um, throughout high school, I was involved in National Technical Honor Society. I'm now Secretary of National Honor Society. I've been in track and field, varsity track and field for two years and PTSA. Also, I'm involved in church youth group, and we do lots of service projects. And I think it's really a blessing to be able to serve our community. Well, that's a that's a good example of the importance of being involved. Other than academics, it's a good release. Boy, the Hawk Band are losing some great students. I, I'm sure they have <laughs> others coming up, right? Yeah. But uh, so let me ask you: Have you all seen yourself on the billboard? And what was your initial reaction when you saw the billboard? Um, for me, it was like. Uh I guess bittersweet, um, it was sort of like coming full circle, you know, from being a freshman and looking up to, you know, past students that, you know, if we had a billboard back then, I don't remember, but um, it, yeah, it just feels like we're coming full circle, you know, from being freshmen to now, I guess, leaving the nest uh, as hawks. <laughs> um, so it, it was just like a splash of uh, water to the face of reality. Um, you know, <laughs> whether we like it or not, we are growing up, and um, I guess it was just a reminder. It's kind of surreal. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, surreal. Wow. Anyone else? Well, when I saw it, I was just, I was like, wow, is that me? Like, is that us? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, just, I looked at it, and it just, it really reminded us that we worked really hard, like, all four years to get here, and I think it was, it was a great accomplishment that we all could have made, so it made me really happy. Wow. Well, like, I remember freshman year, I told my parents, I said, I will be on that billboard. I, I told them, I was like, I want that billboard. And um, they're like, don't worry, Katie, don't worry. It doesn't matter what, what you get. You know, as long as you get into good college, you're okay. I said, no, my face will be on that billboard. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, I was like, see, I told you. <laughs> so Good. So when... I so when I first checked my ranking my freshman year and saw that I was one in the class, I honestly thought, well, I'm actually going to be able to hold this. And I did. And But when I saw that billboard, which my mom went out and made sure I saw it <laughs> after I told her that it was up, um, it showed that, yes, I did it. I succeeded in doing exactly what I had. It had been like a s subtle plan the whole time, but it was there the whole time. And that's something that I, d it, it was nice to know that I have succeeded in things. And that's something that really helped. It really, it's nice to know that you can set goals and make them. And, and on a billboard, it tells the whole community yeah. that you succeeded. So yeah. anyone else? I agree. Uh, it's a really great accomplishment and definitely how it shows the whole city, the top 10 students. Um, I was very proud to be on the billboard, and my parents were very proud. Uh, we went and searched for it the first um, that we heard that it was coming out, and we saw the Harlingen campus. We were searching for hours, and then finally it came up. And um, I think that it really serves as a, a, a great goal to set as a freshman, sophomore, junior, that one day you want to be on that billboard. Other than just being the number, it helps to show and represent yourself um, in front of everyone. Mm -hmm. I remember my freshman year, um, when I first checked my ranking, I was, um, like, I never thought that I could make it onto the billboard, and I saw it, and I was number 39, like, at first, 
And then, like, I saw I saw the billboard, like, the previous year, and I was like, man, I wish I could be on there. And then um, I was like, you know what, I'm going to push myself. So then after I was 39, like, I kept checking it, like, every semester. And then I was number 30, and I was like, oh, I, c I can do it. Like, I can still do it. And then I was I went from 30 to 17, and I was like, whoa, like, if I can go, like, this far, then I can make it. And then from 17 on to 13 to 11, and then I made it to here to number nine and like I remember when they told me I was number nine like I started crying because I couldn't believe that I actually did it but um it just shows that if you set a goal for yourself like if you really want it then you can get it if you like set your mind and your heart to it then you can achieve like anything so okay. I think it's okay my initial reaction to the billboard was that I probably should have done my hair differently <laughs> <laughs> But anyways, it's just really a great reminder of how hard we all have worked, and it's really a great accomplishment for us all to be on there. Okay. Like, um, like Ashley said, it's, it's good to know that your hard work from freshman to senior year has, has really paid off that to put you up there in the top ten. It's a good feeling. So did anybody try to do a selfie or that was a <laughs> I, You did? Yeah. So it can work? I don't know. I wanted to like climb up there. Oh no, you don't want to climb up there. Okay. So. It's just weird seeing your face like in the sky floating. It's like, <laughs> what's, but what's true? Um, and it's just, I just saw it and I just, I worked hard for it. So it was a little surreal, but then again, I was like, well, you deserve that. You worked really hard, so. And I was like, don't get over your head. It's just your face on a bit board. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll say ahead, something. Uh, well, seeing the billboard was, was really, uh, it made me proud, but it, 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 I think it was something, it meant more for my family uh, and for my friends that, that have seen me. And, and I know everyone here, grown up through the years, their, their families are very proud of them. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, to me, the, the, I've I've loved learning in school. School has, to me has been about learning and, and enjoying the the you know the joy of, of learning something you didn't know before, something that you can understand. And so uh, we've 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 done you know we've done pretty well uh, these years. But um, you know uh, being able to represent South uh, at the very end is is really cool. It's cool to be up there to to have our faces on there as the the representatives of South because I remember when I was a freshman seeing the the billboard and it was it was pretty cool. It was cool to know that those were the the brightest of of the South at that time and so it was it it was an honor to be up there. And that's a good point. You're representing your school in that, Tristan. And another thing about the whole billboard is when you realize that other people are seeing the billboard too, <laughs> because I've had teachers. A teachers, administrators, and parents who don't really know me well walk up to me and congratulate me for being on that billboard. And just the feeling of that, that that, that billboard shows the whole community that you, that you have accomplished something. And it's kind of satisfying to know that. That it's, and really, like, heartwarming, and it feels nice, and, like, that the billboard means a lot. It means way more to everyone than it could ever mean to just a single person. You know, it's interesting. Somebody at, at another interview said that people were coming up to them and saying, I didn't know you were that smart. And yeah. that's, uh, <laughs> but, but the reality is it's perseverance, you know, and setting your goals, kind of what you were sharing, setting, I'm going to do it, that's where I'm going to be. And, and so, so when people ask you, how did you do it? What, what's your response? When, when other students ask you or people in your friends, your family say, how did you do it? How, how did you get to the billboard? What's your response to that question? Well, my response to that question is um, I honestly couldn't have done it without my family. Um, there were countless tear sessions with them. I was like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I just can't. And they said, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything you want. And they've constantly told me that. And um, if it wasn't for their support and my, um, their, their countless, like, words of encouragement and just keep working hard, all you have to do is keep working hard, I wouldn't have been here without them. Great response. Um, I, yeah, I agree with Katie. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it uh, with my family with a great support system. Um, uh, but also, I feel like even more important than that is, like, your own personal drive. Because people can tell you to do something as much as they want, but if you don't actually want to go out and do it, you know, nothing's going to happen. 
So um, if I hadn't wanted to achieve this, I don't think I would have. Good point. Good point. <laughs> just like everyone else, for me, the family was involved too, because there was a lot of times where I just threw all my homework aside and just took a nap. <laughs> uh, I was just, I procrastinated a lot on some of the assignments, and without my parents pushing me and my self perseverance as well, I wouldn't have been here like I am now. So it's a support system. Mm -hmm. yeah. Teddy? Well, for me, I never really had the billboard in mind. It was just kind of a, a set of goals that my family always has. My Dad always tells me, if you don't get an A, I'm going to just disown you. It's just, <laughs> that, that's how it is with my family. I never really, competition isn't really too much our thing. Uh, he's always taught me to have your own goals set in mind, and then if you can accomplish that, you're golden. If you can have your own goals that you can accomplish for yourself without having to worry about others, then you'll be perfect. Great, great advice, great advice. For me, I would say that uh, it was just making that critical decision freshman year that I wanted to be in the top 10 students, that um, I just setting your mind to it and staying focused, meaning always doing your homework and uh, trying to do your best on every single assignment that you're given, giving it your all, uh, lots of motivation. Any time that I ever felt uh, discouraged, I just have to remind myself I'm doing it for this, like I want to continue to strive towards being in the top 10 students. Uh, so really a lot of motivation and focus, and I would say not being afraid to ask questions in class. I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> People think that you have to be naturally smart, but for me, um, I would say I'm not a naturally smart student. It's just a lot of perseverance and uh, just motivation and doing the best that I can. And, and mm -hmm. really that's an important piece. It's uh, the part of being persistent, dedicated, committed. It's not about the smarts, it's about do persevering, so. Well, uh, for me, I felt like the majority of it was just my own personal goal that I set for myself because like, there was times when I had, like back to back, had like a lot of family issues. And then I told myself like, I would like break down and stuff and be like, I can't, like I can't work hard anymore because like, my family's like falling apart or something, but. Sure. Like, you, I just, like, pulled it together, and I was just like, no, I have to do this, I have to do this for myself, because, like, in the end, really, you sh it's important to be, like, independent and know what you want for yourself. But I did have a good support system, like, after everything, like, fixed itself and stuff. Good. So, like, but during that time, it's just good to, like, maintain, like, your goals. Like, never, never give up, no matter what's going on around you. Just know that your goal is your Goal and you know you're going to get it either way, no matter what obstacles come in the way. So, so the support system is important, but it's also the inner drive, the, mm -hmm. what you inspire yourself to do. Good, good. Anyone else? Well, I really, really have to agree with Sabrina. Freshman year, I mean, I think most people blow it off <laughs> just because, but I really think it was really important. And I mean, there are times when you have homework in this class, in this class, in this class, but I mean, you really have to have the drive. You have to say, okay, I'm gonna put. I'm not gonna take a nap. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do this homework, and then I'm gonna take a nap. I just. I think it comes first to do your homework and really studying too. I mean, you can't do it without studying and asking questions too. I'm like that. So I just. Yeah, you have to have. You have to want it. You have to want it really bad, and that's what. I think it takes. So teenagers nap too, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, all the time. So, anyone else? Uh, we've talked a lot about the family support system, and which is very, very important, and I really couldn't have done it without my parents. But there is the friend support system. Like, a lot of us here are pretty good friends, and, like, that's part of the reason some of us are here, is that we just work well together and have helped each other a lot to help us get here. And in all honesty, like, ha knowing that they're there, your friends are there really does help. Because sometimes them telling you, are you still number one, really <laughs> helps you make sure you're there. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you could, would you do anything different? Looking back, would you do anything different? I heard a couple of you say I would have taken freshman year a little more serious, but anything that you would do different? I think... The one thing that I would do differently is not to procrastinate as much as I did because I think that really stressed me out more than I should have been. Than it's worth, right? Yes. To procrastinate. 
So like, get it done right away. Uh, more naps? No. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> like as they say, yeah, procrastination was a big thing um, all four years. I really didn't like to do work on time. I would wait for the last moment, take more naps. And, but, but yeah, um, if I would change one thing, it'd probably be to procrastinate less and stay awake more. Okay. Um, I'm going to agree with both of them. <laughs> same, like, e even today, I still kind of sometimes procrastinate. Um, but at the same time, like, I do realize um, even if you do make mistakes, you, you learn from them, you grow from them, uh, trial and error. You know, no one's perfect. Uh, and it, it, it's your mistakes sometimes that define who you are. And um, I'm happy with who I am and where I am today. So I probably wouldn't change anything. So a little less procrastination. Yeah. It's always good. Yeah, it is. Trevor? Uh, my, my mother always, she can't remember anything. I'm sorry. But, but she, she has to, we'll edit she, it. Don't she, worry. Go she ahead. Has to, she has to write things down because that's the only way that you, you make sure that something gets done. Or, or, you know, if you have something in mind, you have to write it down because you forget. You go to sleep for eight hours and then you, you don't remember in the morning. But uh, the beginning of my high school career, I didn't, I didn't really write things down. I would just, you know, go off the top of my head and remember. Or, I mean, I usually see a piece of paper in my backpack and know that I had to complete that assignment. But uh, uh, I'd give that advice to, to some incoming freshmen to, to write things down because I've done that recently. And as you, as you get older, as you become a, a junior and a senior, you're going to be involved in these activities that take a lot of your time and uh, you, you really, you'll start forgetting things because there's so much going on in your life. And I think that's, that goes into adulthood, in, into your career, into your college life. You really have to, to keep record of things, write things down to make sure that you get it done. Because with everything going on, it's really easy to forget. So it's your to-do list. Yes. Yes, that's right. Anyone else? Uh, Teddy? Definitely have to agree with the memo. Uh, the, I, would, I would definitely not change anything. And then I also have to agree with Jeff. My mom also forgets everything. <laughs> uh, I've, have I made many mistakes? Yes. Have I learned from them? Yes. Do I regret anything? No, I don't. Because those, those mistakes have made me better. I've forgotten. I've come to school late. I've forgotten to turn in things. I've learned to write things down. That's so many things I can go on forever in days and days. But uh, that's honestly one of the things that you're going to have to learn. Everyone makes mistakes. And uh, you're going to learn to love those mistakes because you're just going to grow from them and never live life with regrets. That's definitely one of the things you're never going to want to learn. If you live with regrets, then you didn't live, right? So exactly. you got to do, do it. Uh, I do agree with that, although uh, I would give advice to freshmen or um, anyone, sophomore, junior, going to be a senior, to really shoot for the stars. Uh, that's kind of cliche, but I think it is definitely true and meaningful that um, for, for myself that I achieved my goal of becoming student council president and um, being on the student advisory board but I also wish that I would have tried to run for a state officer position for either student council or the future business leaders of America just to go even further like pushing myself more. Okay. Yeah. And, answer, and just basically answering that question would I have done anything differently? No. Because like like Teddy and Memo said that if I'm perfectly happy with all the choices I've made. Like, I'm, I'm right here right now because of all those choices. If I hadn't made those choices, would I still be here? Those are the things you have to understand. And in all honesty, like, even though I have made mistakes, I've learned from them, become a better person, and, well, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but... You can't live with regrets. If you're only worrying about what ifs and what could have beens, then you're never going to be able to move forward in life. And regrets just, if you regret your actions, then you're kind of saying that you were wrong. And if you tell yourself you're wrong, you're not doing it right. Well, I wouldn't have changed anything. I honestly believe God has a plan for us and the mistakes we make, the errors, error and trial and stuff, that all comes from Him. And we wouldn't be where we were right now or where we are now um, if it wasn't for the little things that we did wrong, the little things that we learned from and experienced. And, you know, there are people that are always like, well, maybe I should have done this or maybe I should have done that. But God puts you in those certain places 
to build your character, to build you up. And I honestly believe that I should not feel like I should want anything more than what I have done for him. Thank you for sharing that. Really quickly. Um, <laughs> sorry. I would say I wouldn't have worried so much. I feel like a lot of us spend a lot of time worrying, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have this today and this tomorrow. As long as you do what you need to do, maybe even go a little above and beyond, just a little bit. But if you do what you need to do and you do it right, there's nothing to worry about. And I was always stressing out. I'm still stressing out. And I, I think I would have tried to worry a little less. Well, I, I'll tell you that I often tell people that worry is a useless emotion. If you're not going to do something about it, what are you worrying about, right? So it goes to your point, just do something about it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't spend your time and your space worrying about it. The other thing, to Tristan's point, is you don't want to walk around life saying, I should have done this, I could have done this, I would have done this. You got to live life. You, you got to go out there and do what you need to do and don't worry too much because yeah. then it, you, you get gray hair. Oh, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you. Three years from now, and maybe two years from now, somebody asks you this question, how would you respond? Who, who is a teacher that inspired you, that helped you turn a corner, or that you're going to remember and say, that was a teacher that, that really made a difference in my life? So if you're asked that question two or three years from now, looking back in your HCISD years, who's that teacher? Who's that favorite teacher or that teacher that like to inspired you? I'd like to start with this one. I, I, I know... If I know of several teachers, I mean, we have some great teachers at South, and, and I don't want to talk down to any of them, but, but two of them really, really inspired me. And the first one, and everyone here is going to mention him, uh, Mr. James Keeler, is, <laughs> is the, and he doesn't, he doesn't work for South anymore, but he, he's a retired teacher, but man, he and his wife have the, the, the greatest devotion to, to academic excellence, and they, they, love, they love what they do uh, with their, their SAT prep program, they still do that. And, and, man, they, they give everything for their students. I remember there was a time when Mr. Keeler had a, some medical problems, and he was out for a few weeks of school, and Mrs. Keeler was there every day to give us their assignment. And I think, I think Mr. They, put, they put Mr. Keeler under for a little while, and he was still writing down the assignment <laughs> to, to give us what we had to do. I, I, that was a joke we made, but, but uh, he, he was just, he, he pushed us, and he, he drove us, and we had him, some of us had him for a couple of years, uh, and and it was it was fun, and he was the hardest teacher I had up, up, <laughs> up to that point. And, and the second teacher I want to mention is Mr. Rada. Uh, he's our he's our calculus and uh, pre-calculus teacher. He was so he's he's been our teacher for two years again, uh, and and he is just a he doesn't he doesn't want any recognition, and he doesn't really get any recognition, and and he's he's quiet, but he is the and he he believes in his students, and he's so selfless. And, and he's a great teacher. Thank you for sharing that, Jeffrey. And on top of great teachers, there's also great just people who help in organizations. I just, I want to thank all my band directors who had given me an outlet when things were getting too rough or given me something to do when things were getting a little scary. Teachers, they're great. They help me learn everything. But my band directors are the ones who help me calm down. They're the ones who help me... Uh, let out my emotions through music and it taught me how to make music and I think besides teachers also the extracurricular coaches and staff need a lot of recognition as well because I believe they're the ones who give the students their outlets. And your band director is Shane, right? Shane Mr. Shinsato. Shinsato. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, um, <clears throat> I think my favorite two teachers Obviously, um, well, a lot of us had him, so or have him right now. So, Mr. Conway, I think he really, really like um, prepared me for college. Like what I had in his class, he like he didn't give any like loopholes. Like you have an assignment, you're gonna turn it in, and if not, he's gonna double it, and you need to get it turned in or else. And that's like how it's gonna be for college. Like there's not gonna be any loopholes. There's only gonna be a few grades in college too. So like you need to get it done. So he really pushed us. And then my second teacher I'd like to thank is probably Mrs. Tyre because um, um, she, 
teaches statistics right now at South, and I think she was a really, really good teacher. She was, like, so calm, and everybody was like, oh, she's monotone. I don't like to be in her class, but I liked that she was calm because I was like, I don't understand this, and she'd be like, oh, it's so simple, like, oh, and she would just explain it to me, but she would explain it so calmly, and I was just like, okay, like, it took, like, and I got it so quickly because I think that she was just a really great teacher, and she taught me a lot, and she taught me that I love statistics, so a part of me kind of wants to do something with that too so okay. I thought she was a very good teacher I'd uh, like to recognize um, the baseball coaches we had or also teachers um, coach Leo is a teacher at South and coach Benavides is a teacher at uh, the freshman academy um, on the field they're um, probably one of the smartest people you'll find on the, on the diamond but off the field they're like your best friends if you need something or if ever there's a problem they're one of the first ones there asking see, see what you need if you need help with anything so thank you to them too Good. Um, I definitely like to, I'm eternally grateful for all my teachers. They've all, they've all taught me completely different things. They've helped me grow as a person, but I would definitely like to shout out to um, Mr. Cavazos, which is kind of weird. He is a director for band, but he's the brass director, and I play woodwind and woodwind instruments, so we don't really hang out too much. But um, freshman year through junior year, I've always had extreme anxiety problems. I like to pretend to be confident, and usually that helps, but I have really, really bad anxiety problems, and especially with jazz, where you have to like improv and mm -hmm. stuff, and all, all that jazz. <laughs> <laughs> all that. <laughs> and um, Mr. Cavazos was, uh, he was always there for me, and uh, he would, put me on the spot even when I didn't want to be on the spot. He knew exactly how to deal with my kind of person and uh, he really did help me grow to be less anxious and more confident in what I do and I would definitely like to thank him for that. And you were one of our, you were one of our drum majors, yes. right? Wow, you were, I pretend you to be confident, think. but <laughs> I am a very anxious and nervous person. You, you've but done, I think I hit it pretty well this year. You've done well. You've done well. Uh, I would say someone who's made a difference in my life is Mrs. Lunsford from Coakley Middle School. I was very shy as a child growing up in, uh, from kinder to fifth grade. Very shy, would not speak to adults, wouldn't uh, interact with a lot of people, but going uh, through her program starting in sixth grade, I feel really made a difference in my life, bringing uh, me out of my shell with her drama class, acting, and she taught me how to speak eloquently and uh, to not be afraid and to just... Um, she really brought me out of my shell, and I thank her so much for that. Wow, great. Well, I have a couple teachers. Um, my junior year, we had Miss Vaughn for English, and, <laughs> I mean, she was, she was hard. I mean, coming from, like, freshman and sophomore year, I think she was my hardest English teacher, and she really taught us, like, taught us English. And then, so, I mean, she, we learned from her. And then um, another teacher, he's my art teacher, Mr. Liao. I mean, he lets us really just be creative, do, like, whatever we feel we need to do. But, I mean, more than that, he really taught me to be a better person. I mean, I would come in his class angry and flustered, and he would just calm me down. It's okay. You don't need to stress. I mean, just, like to be worry-free and, I mean, get things done, but don't stress about it because it's going to get done. And um, he was just always there when I, oh, Miss Lee, I need to print a paper. I'm going to be late. Okay, you can just print it here. I mean, he was always there. I mean, he's been there for a lot of us, so I really need to thank him. Good. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to agree with Mitzi and say Mr. Liao because he's been there for the past three years of my high school career. And he just is so selfless and giving his time to, <coughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Self, selfless and giving his time to the students. And like this year, I know he had 12 people doing their art portfolio, me included. And he would come on weekends, stay after school, give his time, and just, it was really great to see a teacher so dedicated to their students. Good. Anyone else? Well, I have to go back to Jeff. I have to thank Mr. Rada. He's actually my true inspiration of becoming a mathematics teacher. Um, my junior year, I was, I, I really thought I was going to be a journalist. I was like, I'm going to write. I'm going to write my way through college. And 
um, I was talking to my parents, and they're like, you realize you're not a good writer, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm a decent writer, but I'm not, like, a good writer. And I was like, okay. And then they were like, well, what about math? And I was like, what about math? They're like, you're good at it. And I'm like, I am. <laughs> and so I would, there were countless, like, tutoring sessions and stuff. I would talk to Mr. Rada. And one day I finally was like, you know, I want to be a math teacher. Like, I want to do what you're doing. And he said, don't do that. <laughs> He's like, you have so much more potential. Don't be a math teacher. I said, but I can do to be a math teacher. I want that. I want to inspire kids. I want to do what you're doing to me. And he he's such a humble person that he he'll be just, he'll kind of like shoo you off. But you know, it like really takes him in the heart. And like he's a really inspiring person. He really is. And um, there's one other person I have to I have to recognize. It's my UIL journalism coach. Her name is Sarah McDonald. She's the one that taught me that I should not write, <laughs> even though I am I, I do UIL journalism. Um, she's always been there. Like any different award or recognition I've gotten, I get a text from her. Great job, Katie. You're so great and stuff. And she she really is a huge encouragement on my life. Um, I met her freshman year out of the blue, just like, okay, like, I'll do UIL journalism because she went and picked me up. But she not only is there for UIL journalism, she's there as an inspiration and encouragement. And I think that's what all the teachers do at South. But there's always one or two that really hit home Stand for up, someone. Yeah. Make and a it, it's it's really important to a student to have someone that not only have a family support, but if you don't have that family support, you have a teacher support that's always there for you. And it's really fantastic. Okay. So anybody uh, out there may be wondering, what's a memorable experience you're taking with you? What's one memory you've created there in your high school years that you, you're going to look back and say, I remember when we did this, and it was a lot of fun. And so... Anybody want to share a memorable experience in your last four years that you're going to look back and remember that one? Okay, I think the most memorable experience was um, Friday night football games, but there was a special one that it just started pouring down rain, and just the student section just stood, and we stayed, and we cheered, and it was just, we were drenched, but it was a lot of fun. To, supported the team. Yes, supported the team. Um, I've played um, varsity baseball for four years, and um, that's probably one of the best memories we ever had was all the bus rides we took to the away games and the playoff games. Um, we'd always be joking around before and after the games, win or lose, we would always be there to pick each other up and just have, have fun on the way back home and on the way to the games. You'll remember that for years. Um, I, would, I would probably remember all my moments in band. Um, whether it be from like those rehearsals where Mr. Shinzada would just be really upset at us or... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, band people know what I'm talking about. <laughs> or all the times where, you know, we accomplished our goals, like uh, making state after, That's you right. know, two years after not having made it, you know, we had all that pressure and then it, was, it felt so good to finally make it uh, from uh, me making all state, uh, going through all of that. Um, so that's what I would remember the most. Just really, really fun time. And I'm really glad I the band to program. be in band. Yeah. Good. I definitely have to remember, uh, would remember everything that Memo said, but uh, going off on a slight tangent, starting off at freshman year, I came into band, and I was just that other freshman kid, so I was just treated like any other freshman <laughs> kid, and looking back to now, um, when I was in band, I suddenly I was a drum major, people were treating with me with respect, eventually, uh, sorry, especially all the freshmen. And that just felt really amazing that I earned their respect and they treated me like an, like another director, like another adult. That I wasn't just some other kid in band. So that definitely hit me hard and I'll always remember the respect that I earned from all my peers. Good for you. I think my most memorable moment was I was manager of a volleyball team for a year at South um, and it was a freshman team. And I was in a group huddle with all the freshmen and I was with Coach Cruz, and she was giving them a talk about how academics is important, and she used me as an example. And it really, it, it was really exciting and stuff, but like it also opened an opportunity for me to talk to the girls and tell them how much academics is not important and to be involved and to do everything you can in high school because it will reflect you and it will build character and it will build who you are. 
and that that was my most memorable moment was being able to hit home to freshmen you'll remember that for many years yeah. from now good anyone else mm, i'll never forget all the moments i had during cheerleading i'll never forget like any one of those with the girls they're all amazing they they just like made a great impact in my life and um I think the most fun I ever had at school was probably going on the student council trip this year with um, Sabrina, the president, and a few other people. It was just so fun. Like I can't, I can't think of another field trip or another time where I had like that much fun. I was just constantly laughing for like two, three days straight. It was like so great. I felt like so relieved. Like I didn't think about school at all. It was just like so. I had so much fun. Everybody was Laughter is a great a medicine. Time. I said it is. So. I'd have to say another band geek talking here, but <laughs> <laughs> my very first football game, my first marching show, it has to be my most memorable moment because that's the moment where I felt like I was a part of something. I was in a group of people who were all searching for the same goal, and I was in a organization that just used every single person and what they did. And every single person was important just as much as everyone else. And it just, it made me feel like I was a part of something and that I was destined to do something. And it just, since then on, I've been wanting to have that same feeling in everything that I did. And that's a big organization. A lot of kids involved in that. I, I think one of my favorite or most memorable experiences uh, being at South was, uh, well, I've, I've played football seven years of my life. And so when I moved to South, uh, we weren't we weren't too hot, you know. We we hadn't had <laughs> we won two games in in two seasons or something like that. Uh, but but uh, I mean we've moved past that. And last year's class really uh, stepped up and 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 you know uh, accomplished a lot by by having a winning season under Coach Wilson. And 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 I think this year's class has has really been a part of that because last year it was a young group and we had a lot of guys uh, this year that were part of that group. Uh, trying to build a, a, a positive team. And I think that made it a lot more fun for the student section and the band, uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, but it was, it, was, it was great to be part of that uh, team. And I'll never forget uh, the seniors last year, uh, Austin Lambert. I played quarterback my whole life uh, until my junior year in high school. And, and w that was our first winning season. I'm not, not saying that that's <laughs> the, no, I'm, I'm just kidding. I wasn't a starter, I wasn't a, I wasn't a starter but, but uh, just playing under under Austin and and, and seeing the the uh, my friend uh, Brandon Rodriguez uh, uh, playing together, you know, we we stuck through the tough times and and we really, I think we accomplished a lot by by having you know some pretty great seasons these past two years. Well, and they stayed in the rain supporting yes, it. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, and then like another band nerd talking here. It's <laughs> like. Um, I am a percussionist, and I and I've been on and I've been on the drum line the past three years, and I was in our front ensemble my freshman year. And in all honesty, because uh, they they've marched longer than I have, like a year, because I technically didn't march. But it was still a really nice experience as the pit. But it was even a better experience marching. It was amazing marching. Like it's a whole other experience. Because my past two years, I I marched. Um, I march marching tenors, which is the four drums, and like those things are heavy. <laughs> We're not gonna worry about that. Um, but it's it's really interesting. Like you're out there, and then after your performance, you're like, wait, wow, what did I just do? No. That that happened a couple times, and it was weird. <laughs> but also like when when Jeff was talking about how see seeing the football team come up, I've seen our drum line come up a lot in the past four years and like we kind of make fun of how bad the drum line our drum line was freshman year and and how much we've grown and changed over the past four years that I've seen and these new people coming in and redefining who we are and where they're heading in the future I'm really glad to have been a part of it and I'm going to miss all those guys because I honestly don't know where I'd be without them. It's like a family. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you, so, so you, you talk about the, the memorable experiences and you all have had some great memories that you're going to take with you for years to come. So some people are just getting started with their high school experience and are incoming freshmen. And so what would you t advise them as they move forward and into 
joining the incoming freshmen, what advice would you give them? Don't procrastinate. Don't, don't <laughs> procrastinate. That. Some of you have been saying that. I would say be open-minded. Uh, really try to be in uh, lots of clubs and organizations and see what you like best, uh, to see what your interests are. That way you can make friends. And um, obviously you need to be involved to put that on your college resume. Uh, so definitely being open-minded and trying out new things, not being afraid, breaking out of your shell, and trying to be a friendly person and uh, meeting new people. Get involved. Get involved. Okay. Well, I think the most important thing is to stay strong. Your friends are going to change in high school. Your body's still changing in high school. <laughs> um, but also, <laughs> no, but like also, like, as a, <laughs> but like also as a person, you, <laughs> like your character and stuff is starting to change. And you have to stay strong in what your will and your drive is. And you have to stay strong in anything you do because as long as you are a strong character and a strong person you can achieve what you're wanting and you can achieve anything that you put your mind to so if you stay strong it doesn't matter who's gone it doesn't matter what happened to you you're there and you can achieve it because you're strong that's great advice great advice well i think some important freshman advice like i said it's it's really important but i think something else they need to be is social I mean all of us we're pretty good friends I mean we help each other out when we need it and I mean you need to be social you need to talk to people because I mean you can be by yourself and you can do it alone but it's funner and it's better when you have people around you that are wanting the same thing as you they can help you out and just go to class too you can't miss all these days then you're going to be behind and it's hard to catch up so I mean that's something else I've learned I have to go to school every day and I think that's what helped us all too being at school and dedicating our time and not just blowing it off so stay focused stay focused okay um, I would advise all the freshmen join band don't do anything else just <laughs> <laughs> uh, well uh, I would advise them to, to get involved with a lot of things. Um, I mean, high schools, you know, academics are great and all, but, you know, it can get boring at times. You need um, other outlets, you know, for either for creativity purposes or competitive purposes like sports. Um, but, but it's good to get out there, not only, not just because, you know, colleges like to see a well-rounded student, but also for you to grow as a person, to experience new things. You know, it can't all just be about what's in the classroom and learning through that. I mean, that's hugely important, but it's also important to build uh, experiences uh, outside of the classroom. So have a balance with yeah. all of that, okay? Well, I'd just like to say that some freshmen get into, like, relationships and stuff that they should not get into. So, like, <laughs> freshmen and seniors and stuff. Like, <laughs> like, and then, like, some people are in relationships and they're like, oh, I'm going to go to this college because my boyfriend's going to this college, like, no, you got to stay focused on school. I mean, there's some high school relationships that, like, they go on to college and they get married, but a lot of them don't. So they, just, they need to stay focused and not worry about rela relationships. Stay so. single. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Teddy? Uh, going off on a little different of a note, um, definitely... Definitely don't ever jeopardize your morals. You're going to go into college, I'm sorry, you're going to go into high school and definitely college too. And I'm not going to say, uh, you're going to be presented with a lot of different choices uh, that really can't be talked about right now, but there are going to be some choices that can really define you as a person. And uh, I'm sure all of us have been, especially me. And uh, the second you jeopardize your morals as a person, you've already lost and it's going to just be completely different for the rest of your life. You know, Teddy, you make a great point, and that carries you throughout life, and, and it's staying true to your moral compass, and so great, great advice. Um, I was going to say what Teddy said, just basically don't give Wait, in to... Wait, how did he know you were going to say that? <laughs> I know, he's Teddy? <laughs> just don't give in to peer pressure. Don't let anyone make you do something that you don't want to do, especially your friends. If they try to make you do something... They aren't your true friends, and just know that they aren't. Goes back to your point, stay strong and stay 
true to yourself. Jeffrey? I want to tell incoming freshmen that, that although your classes might not seem that difficult, it, it's only going to get harder. And it might not get that much harder because, I mean, you, if, you, you might, if, you, if you stick to it and you study, you, you won't have that big a challenge. But everything builds on everything else. That's and right. and I, I'm sure college is going to build off what we've learned, and we're in for, for a surprise. But, uh, but I just want to tell them that boost your GPA that freshman year because that's when it's easy, and it's only going to get harder. So, so protect your moral compass. Stay single, and, <laughs> right? And 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 take care of your take care of your GPA, right? Because what sometimes people don't realize it's it's really your GPA at your freshman year that's going to define where you end up as a senior year, or it's going to have a big impact. The needle doesn't move very far after your freshman year. I mean, it moves a few points. To her point earlier, you know, she went from 30 to 17, I think you said, and then finally made it to the top 10. <laughs> Those are big jumps, but that's more the exception than the rule. You really have to stay focused on your work. You were going to say? Uh, one other thing. I think this is probably the most important, but just believe in yourself. And don't think, oh, I'm never going to get there. I, ca I can never do that. Because if you tell yourself that, you won't. Right. You just have to believe in who you are and just do your best in what you do. And do something you love with the people you care about. Good point. So something you've learned in high school, your four years, that definitely is going to make you a stronger college student. I already heard, don't procrastinate, but what do you, have you learned these four years that you say, I'm going to take with me to college because it worked for me and it helped me make it to the top ten? I would have to say studying. Um, I learned for myself as a person that I'm an oratory learner, that I have to listen to someone, I have to converse with someone in order to understand information. And so... It's going to be hard in college if I don't have a teacher that lectures me. And so I, I will have to get a recorder, and I will have to read the book, and I will have to converse with one of my friends about what I'm learning and stuff in order to succeed in college. But I learned that in high school, which was really important for me, because if I learned that in college, yeah. I could have been failing at this at, in like life, you know? And um, I think that was a really important breakthrough that I learned through high school that's going to really help me in college. Wow, that's an, that's an important lesson, important lesson. Anyone else? Um, yeah, like she's saying, the most important thing I've learned that, you, that people really need to understand is that a lot of people don't understand how they themselves work. And a lot of times if you take time to examine the decisions you've made and why you've made those decisions, you learn a lot more about yourself. And I've learned a lot about myself. Like, I'm an obsessive learner that if I really want to know about something I will get to I'll learn as much as I can about it and I'm just naturally curious and that's a lot of the reason why I'm where I am but I do understand that not everyone's like that and everyone has their own learning techniques and you need to f you need to figure out what you need and don't really worry about what other people how other people learn and stuff like that and you really need to look at yourself and not just, don't just live your life, look at how you're living it as well. And learn from that. Yeah. Okay. I think um, you should take as many notes as possible when in any lesson you're learning, because I've taken some quizzes and tests that I thought were going to be a breeze, and I completely blanked out because I didn't know how to do it, and I, I didn't, my body, I guess, didn't learn how to do it from notes. And then I've taken some tests that were quite difficult, and I breezed through them because notes helped. So note-taking helped you, and that's what you're going to take to college, yep. okay? When else? What, a, a famous saying from a geometry teacher some of us have had, Miss Amitrani, is utilize your resources. And she would say that every day, and, and I think that will carry on through college, that advice. And it's, it's, a, it's a, some good advice because uh, you can't do anything on your own. You can't do anything if you don't ask questions, if you don't uh, read. If you don't read, you got to read. you got to read. you got to read. Answer the question. What's the question asking you? Answer it. It's, it's not. And I mean, everything comes down to that. Really, it does. Every subject that you have. And sometimes you you ask a question to somebody, and they answer everything else except the question, right? <laughs> and that's what you call bird walking. They're just walking around and so forth. So, what were you gonna say? I think it's important to stay organized. Really, like have a planner. Just schedule your test dates and. And most importantly, I think it's important to be involved. College is really about branching out, finding yourself, and just 
socializing, not staying in your dorm all day. So just staying organized and getting involved. So you learn organization is important. Oh, yeah. Take it to college with you. Teddy? Uh, I'd have to agree with that. Um, there's a saying that not many people know about, too much of anything becomes a poison. If you have too, even though grades are very important and studying is very important, you do too much of it, it's going to be detrimental to how you react with your friends, how you're social, and even your grades. You're going to think about it way too much and all of a sudden I don't even know what I'm thinking about anymore. Make sure that you make your time for your friends, your family, and all the important things in life, not just grades. Keep a balance. Okay. Uh, I would say, um, in regards to classwork, um, try to be prepared. Like in high school, for me, uh, talking to students that were older than me and the grade above, like what should I expect coming to this class, and trying to become um, a step ahead, more prepared than by the first day of school, already knowing um, what is expected of me. That way, I'm just more mentally prepared uh, and makes you feel a bit more comfortable. So I've been thinking about it recent, recently, how am I gon going to um, survive in college? And I think that I'll probably um, get my books ahead of time, just flip through them, see what is expected of me to learn. And that's something you kind of do here from math teachers at South. They do recommend that. Or also um, talking to trying to find people um, one grade level above you just to get more mentally prepared for what you're um, going to be doing. And um, that's about it. And that helped you prepared. in high school and yes, take definitely. it to college and try and mm -hmm. find that information. So Yes. I think I've learned a lot of time management. You get, <laughs> you get no very busy with very many things and in college there's going to be even more things to do, even more work and then you need to find time to come back to visit your family. So I think that in my ways of going through everything I've gone through, I've learned a lot of time management. Even though I wasn't perfect at it, I've learned a lot about it and I'm going to carry that through college. So you just said on film you're coming back to see your parents. So, <laughs> so you're going to be locked into that. So let me ask you, um, so I opened the newspaper 10 years from now to read a story about you. What am I going to read? What, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? And you say, well, that's a long time, but you've been in the school system 12 years, and here you are at graduation, right? And so 10 years from now, we're going to read what about you? What, what, where will you be in 10 years? Okay, I know this question. <laughs> I've, been, I've been planning since my freshman year, trying to decide. I mean, I know coming in as a freshman, people are like, I don't know what I'm going to study. I don't know. But I mean, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, Ten years from now, I'll be graduated from pharmacy school from UC Austin. That's why I want to finish off. And then I'm going to come back to the Valley and open my own pharmacy that I can give back to, I mean, where I used to live. So that's what I want to do. I want to be really successful. And I'm really driven to do that. So I hope that works out. It's going to happen for you. Yeah. It's going to happen for you. Well, I've been meaning to ask you, but um, I kind of wanted to come back to HCISD. <laughs> so you've got a job. Just okay. Get to do it, so. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I really want to come back to HCISD. If not, I want to go to a Title I school. I want to go and teach uh, lower poverty areas math because I know it's a struggle lately to find math teachers. It's a struggle to find science teachers. And kids, I hear it every day, why does math matter? Why does math matter? And if anything else, it's a, it's a way to um, spark those um, brain cells to get and learn and to do problem solving, if anything. And I really, I really want to teach math and hopefully I'll do that at HCISD. Well, good for you. And I was a former math teacher, so I, I talk your language all the time. <laughs> right? And math is important. So who else? Ten years from now. Uh, hopefully, I don't, I don't really know exactly what I'm going to do after I major in biomedical engineering. But um, I know med school is an option. So, you know, maybe hopefully ten years from now I might be a doctor. But I don't know for sure yet. Good for you. Okay, 10 years from now, I hope to um, maybe start an own business or be a successful businesswoman and also maybe be married and have family. And 
well, not a lot of kids at that point, <laughs> but <laughs> I just want to be able to honor God in all that I do and everything that I achieve. Good for you. I, I, I don't know where I'll be 10 years from now. I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't know. I think I'll, I'll go wherever my, wherever my uh, college education takes me. I, I know uh, the school I'm going to offers a lot of job fairs, and, and I plan on finding a job there that, and, and starting out from there uh, in, in aerospace engineering. Uh, but uh, career-wise, I'm not sure where, where I'll go, but... Um, I know that I want to give back to my community, and uh, I've been involved in the Scouts, the Boy Scouts of America, uh, for for three years now, and and I've really I've loved every moment of it, and I've been I've been really active in it. I've, I mean, I'm, every other weekend I'm I'm doing something for Scouts, camping or or teaching kids, and and it's fun, and I enjoy it, and I believe in the program, and so I want to be a Scout leader someday. And my dad's a Scout leader; he's given back, and I'm really proud of him, and uh, that's that's something that I really want to do uh, the rest of my life. Good for you. Good. Um, if you haven't figured it out already, I'm a very big family man. Family means so much to me. Friends mean so much to me. Uh, so if it's just another thing that I've been taught from my family, 10 years from now, um, I was planning on trying to finish dental school, getting a good job, regulate my own hours, have all this free time, because I definitely want to give my family, just like my dad did, anything and everything that I couldn't have. It, my dad's given me a lot of things, and he's tried to give me everything that he possibly could, which is going to be trying, which is going to be hard to beat. But the one thing that he couldn't really give me when I was younger is his time. He was in the Air Force. He was a flight surgeon. He'd be gone from home months at a time. I didn't see him much in my childhood, and that's so. That's the main thing I want to give my children. Ten years from now, fifteen years from now, whenever is my time. And I just really want to emphasize that. Thank you. Anyone else? Ten years from now. Well, I want to finish the physician's assistant program. Um, I want to finish it off at UTPA, and then work for a few years, and then hopefully own my own clinic. So. Good for you. Here locally, your own clinic. Is that what you're hoping for? Mm, no. <laughs> or anywhere. Go upstate. upstate. I love. I love Texas. So I <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go upstate. Well, we'll we look forward to seeing where you end up with that <laughs> clinic. To be quite honest, in 10 years, I honestly don't know where I see myself. And it's not that negatively. It's just that if I, like, I don't really like setting super long-term goals in 10 years is kind of a long-term goal. But that it's basically because I still don't know exactly where I want to go. I'm still learning things about myself right now, so saying things like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. Only, like, the more goals you set that you don't succeed, you kind of disappoint yourself a bit. And so, but the other thing, regardless of that, I know that I will be learning things, that I'm just the type of guy who always needs to be learning something. And regardless of where I am, what I'm doing, I'll still be trying to learn some, something new. And that's something everyone really should try to be doing. So you'll be still learning. That's important. Like uh, Tristan said, I really don't know where I'll be in 10 years, but I'm hoping that I'll be done with uh, school already and I'll have a successful job in the engineering program. Uh, it really does offer a lot of unique opportunities, so I hope to take advantage of one of those if opportunity does not. There's a big shortage in engineers, and so that's a good field to, to be studying. Anyone else? 10 years from now. Well, 10 years from now, I intend to be retired if my kids get off my payroll. Okay, I won't say that. All right, so let's move on to the last question. And so the, the last question is this. Uh, here's your opportunity to do a shout out or to acknowledge someone and thank them for their contributions to your success. And so if you look at the camera right in front of you, who do you want to do that shout out to and who do you want to acknowledge out there? I'd like to make um, two shout-outs, um, one to the baseball team. That they've been there for four years for me. Um, baseball was really a good, an escape from school and from all the stresses that I had throughout the 12 years I've been in school, so thank you to them. And a second shout-out would be to my family. Through all the tough times and all the stress and all the hard times, they've been there, and especially my parents. Without my parents, I probably wouldn't be here today, so I love you guys. 
Okay, first and foremost, I'd like to give a shout out to Mr. Ingram and Dr. Rodriguez for helping me throughout my whole high school career. And most importantly, I'd like to give a shout out to my family for always being there and pushing me to be my best and just being a shoulder to cry on. That was a loud shout out, right? <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to um, Dr. Paredes, my counselor, for helping me so much throughout high school, choosing my classes and uh, being a great support and guide for everything. And also my family, my parents, thank you for everything so much and for dedicating basic your, basically your life to me and uh, providing me with everything I need and more. And also to my older sister for being um, almost like another cooler version of my mom, for helping me with... Uh, <laughs> All that I need in being there every step of the way throughout high school, and uh, she really has shaped me into who I am today. So thank you so much. Okay, Jeffrey. I'd like to to acknowledge my my parents and my grandparents, and uh, uh, thank them and my sister, and, and thank them so much because. Uh, Hold on, he didn't forget the sister. No, I didn't. Right? I said okay. My sister. So. <laughs> uh, you know, family is family is great because uh, they they accept you. For whatever you are, you know it, it doesn't. I I don't. I wouldn't have to be here. I, I I wouldn't have to be planning on on going to college. They would they would love and support me uh, no matter what. And so I'm just I'm I'm proud and and I'm I'm very uh, blessed to have that that type of family at home. And and I I love them all. And thank you so much. Okay. Mm, well, I'd like to give a shout out to, of course, my mom, and my dad. They had a really really rough childhood and like. To see them come so far is really inspiring for me because, like, of all the stories they tell me and stuff, like, it, like, breaks my heart that they went through all that, but that they pushed through it. It's just really inspiring. So it inspires me also, so I hope they're proud of me. And then, um, of course, my brother and my sister and my grandma, who would, like, pick me up from school every day. She taught me how to, like, quilt and crochet and, like, all this stuff. <laughs> and then... Um, I'd also really like to thank my best friend, Stephanie. She's been my best friend since kindergarten, and she's always there for me. Every time I'm having, like, a rough time, she's like, she'll be there, she'll pick me up, she picks me from down, you know, and then she always gives me a shoulder to cry, and she's just really, um, she's really helpful to me in everything I do. Thank you. All right, I'd like to give a shout-out to my stepmom and my father, they, they provided an out for me when I needed it. Um, I came and moved here in the middle of my eighth grade year because of the fact that um, my parents are divorced and I had a hard life with my mother. Um, both of them were going to college and I was taking care of the household. And so I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be successful. I wouldn't know where I would be at this point. I wouldn't even know if I would be going to college. So I'm really thankful for them and what they've done for me. I'd like to give a shout out to my mother for giving me everything that I have, for pushing me to do my best and to making sure I did everything that I needed to do. Without her, I wouldn't be here. And for my father, for setting such high standards for me to make sure I reach them. I just wouldn't be here without them. I'd like to thank my, my dad as well. He's, um, he's done a lot for my family, uh, both the speakable and unspeakable things. He's put my family first throughout good and bad times when he was here when he wasn't here and I definitely like to give a th uh, shout out to my mom uh, she had to deal with both my sister and I when she was alone for a lot of the time when my dad wasn't here and uh, my grandparents had a lot in that but my mom definitely found a way to put up with us when we were at our worst and she was definitely not as, at her best and I would like to let her know how much I love her for that and how much I love my dad for that Okay, did everybody get a chance? All right, we've got one over here. <laughs> well, I have to really, really give a shout out to my parents who are my support system. I mean, they're to me, they're two completely different people. My mom is the one who pushes me and inspires me because I see how successful she is. And she, I mean, she went to school at night to finish her college. And, I mean, my dad was always taking care of us. But, I mean, she pushes me, and my dad is the one who's so proud of me. I mean, he's great. Like, <sighs> and then um, my sister, who I can go to when I can't go to my parents. So <laughs> uh, I really, really couldn't do it without them. 
Well, it was not intended to end on a note where people got uh, serious and, and the memories flood, flood us, but it's a reminder that it's important to stop, look, and listen. Uh, it's important to thank those that oftentimes we, not for any reason other than we take for granted because we know they're always going to be there. Uh, so it's important to have a balance, what I call, between the mind and the heart. And so your mind tells you to do one thing and your heart pushes you to do another. And when you have a balance and you realize that you're not where you are just because you did it all on your own, but you have a support system, which includes friends and teachers and so forth, then you're more, uh, more apt to be a very successful individual. Uh, don't take things for granted in life. Uh, take the moment, take the time to thank those individuals who have made a difference and, and I'm honored and I'm humbled to serve as your superintendent. It's very important to me to see that we're, we're producing the high quality, highly prepared individuals, but also individuals that have a heart. And their whole intent and their highest hopes is also to give back to the very community and to the very family that has supported you. So thank you for spending an hour with me <laughs> and thank you for giving of your time. And time is so precious, I go back to to Teddy that says that one thing I'm going to focus on is giving time back to family, his future family. Uh, time is very precious. And so when you co commit to giving time to anyone, uh, that means a true commitment uh, of yourself. And so thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you all at commencement in three weeks or how, how many weeks do we have left? Oh, I know, you know, you know how many days and, and hours and so forth. So, so, so thank you very much. And I really enjoyed this interview. Thank you.